Welcome everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about KVM guest virtual machine creation. Before creating any virtual machine, we have to ensure the operating system which we are planning to put on uh, guest VM is supported uh, by KVM or not. That's very easy to check. You can simply run OS info dash query space OS on your KVM host. It is going to list uh, what all operating systems are supported if it is supported. What is the OS unique identifier which will be required when you are creating a VM? You can see on my screen I am using command line way uh, to create a guest VM, but I will take you through graphical way too. Personally, as a Linux admin, or my total background is in Unix and Linux, so I prefer if you use command line way, that's easy and uh, that's something you can automate uh, for your future builds. If you're using graphical, that's up to you, but again, preference is command line. I'm using word dash install utility, which I mentioned in uh, introduction section. This is a utility to manage the KVM through command line. After that, I am saying dash dash network bridge is virtual bridge zero, which we're using for our KVM network communication, which I mentioned in network section. Then dash dash name. This is going to be name of the guest virtual machine, test VM1. You can use any name in your uh, setup. But again, this is unique. This shouldn't be duplicated. Which OS variant you want to install? OS variant is basically operating system, which is going to be installed on guest VM. I'm saying CentOS 7.0. I got this operating system from query info command. Then uh, dash dash RAM is basically how much memory you want to allocate to guest machine. It is 1024, which is 1 GB. You can uh, set your desired RAM. Dash dash vCPU is equal to 1. Right now, this VM will be created with 1 vCPU. You can say 4, 5, or whatever number you want based on your capacity requirement and supported by KVM. Disk path. Disk path is equal to this is a path which I mentioned. This is a default path where lib, lib word slash images. Here I'm creating a, a disk file with test VM 1. Dash OS. OS basically is identified that is uh, image which is used for operating system with extension dot qcrw2. qcrw2 is a format basically which is uh, recommended to be used uh, for managing uh, QMU images. Bus is equal to Vertio. Vertio is basically a full virtualization bus. Size equal to 5. Size mean uh, the size in GB for this particular image file, then graphics is equal to none. I'm not using any graphics. I'm going to do CentOS installation uh, command line. So I'm saying none. In case you are installing Windows like operating system, you can say graphics need to be uh, like you can see here. I mentioned you can set it to spice. Spice basically that's it. going to be in graphical mode. Uh, if you got VNC enabled on your KVM server, Dash dash location. This basically tells the OIT install command which particular ISO image to be used for OS installation. So this is a complete path slash OS media. I'm keeping my images in this particular directory, OS media, and this is the ISO image. Extra argument is uh, what is the console type? It is terminal TTY0. Console setting is this one. This is the baud rate. Check all is equal to off. Check all is equal all to off uh, it mean uh, if any setting need to be overrided it will by default override so this is again uh, not mandatory option but uh, that you can use or you can avoid that option in case you get some error you can fix that error or you can see what is the error you can see why that error is appearing then if it is safe to ignore you can ignore it but this is lab setup i'm doing installation fr fresh from scratch so i know this is not going to harm anything so guys, uh, even in this table, you can see I have listed all the options, what particular option, what it is meaning. So let's create our first VM. Okay, I'm on my KVM host. So this is our lab on VM creation. Here I'm going to check OS info. Dash query space OS. This is going to list all the operating systems. You can see that's a big list which is supported by KVM. 
here let me uh, give you example so you will understand it in a bit more detail it's a very big list guys so it supports most of the latest operating systems everything everything uh, you can see first column is short id this is the short id this is uh, identify for operating system this is the operating system name this is the version and this is the id if you want to get more detail about uh, that operating system as uh, mentioned i'm going to install centos 7 so here this is centos 7 dot zero is the unique id which i'm going to use uh, in my commands this is for centos 7 dot zero and this is centos uh, information page like if you want to install debian fedora these are the unique identifiers or a uh, short identifier and similarly you can see it supports freebsd macintosh it supports mandrake it supports netbsd openbsd open to say rel rel suse linux ubuntu windows 2k12 windows 10 windows 98 there are many windows versions supported you can see here uh, that's a current support list for kvm so guys uh, let's create uh, a centos guest as i mentioned i'm keeping all images in this particular directory i got two images centos 7 and windows 7 so i can uh, give you a demo uh, here you can see uh, its permissions are not correct that i just noticed let's make it 755 so kvm commands can read this file Sorry, it need to be path in front. Okay, looks good. Looks good now. Let's make 755 here too. Same mistake, sorry. Okay, looks good. So let's begin our VM creation. Guys, you can see on screen I used Word install, which is command line utility to create VMs, and the options which I discussed. Pressed enter, and uh, I got message starting install. Then it uh, retrieved the tree information from the ISO file. It uh, got uh, init RD image. It started loading. It allocated a disk drive, which is this particular file, which is mentioned as a disk image here. Here, yeah, disk path, this one and uh, that file is created with the size 5 gb you can see here so no need to manually create a file what install automatically creates a file for you if you have mentioned and now you can see it is connected to domain domain uh, vm guest vm kvm guest so all are interrelated words so here we are calling it domain it connected to our machine test vm1 and these are the messages which are appearing on console you can see this is console type tty and uh, right now it is on installation screen so basically our vm is created and uh, operating system installation can be started and you can configure the things as per your requirement and uh, your soe settings so that's again another thing which you can uh, easily do you can do the installation you can see guys uh, i have done the basic configuration for centos 7 installation but again depending upon your operating system type whether that's window linux or any other uh, distribution you can do the basic settings which you usually do for your operating system installation and uh, you can see here it detected ethernet 0 is connected so basically detected the link for the virtual interface which is going to be created on uh, virtual bridge 0 so i'm saying yes it will start uh, CentOS 7 installation you can see installation is started so that's a way to do the installation it will finish in another 5-10 minutes because i have start selected the minimal package installation and based on your requirement your soe setting you can go with uh, whatever standard uh, you want or you require you can see installation is almost finished and my system is uh, rebooting the guest domain basically that is rebooting and uh, it got sent to a seven installed so that's good so guys uh, this is a way you create vm and now once the system is booted you can connect through console or ssh or any other way which you like and uh, then you can perform the configuration or your soe settings 
then you can use this machine as your base template no need to every time install or do the configuration work again and again so this can be your template let me log in quickly you can see uh, I selected name test VM1 during installation. So this is our test VM. Let me see IP configuration. You can see it automatically go to IP address, which is good. So let's try to ping Google. You can see ping is working. Let's try to ping Google with DNS name, google.com. It is working. So guys, uh, you can see our test machine is good. Let me quickly take you through uh, graphical way if you have to create a machine using graphical interface because this was test interface and uh, some guys uh, are not comfortable i can understand so i will uh, give a quick introduction to graphical interface so here i'm connected to my kvm host the server where we have installed kvm hypervisor here i will show you how you can launch graphical interface so simply there are two ways you can go through application system tools virtual machine manager this is the interface which is used by kvm for graphical management uh, if you don't want uh, to go here is in simply in the terminal you can type uh, word manager press enter it is going to open that particular interface here uh, you can see guys the test vm is running which we just created so that's a way like uh, you can list out what VMs are running in graphical mode. If you have to create a new VM, just click here. File. New virtual machine. Here, what is going to be your installation media? Let's say I have selected ISO image. Or uh, import existing disk image file. If you got uh, something which is already on your system, the VM is already created, you want to import... Uh, that particular disk from that VM. Here I'm going with ISO media because we already got ISO media for Windows 7. For graphical, I will give you a demo for Windows 7. Click forward. Here select the path. And uh, our disk is in, uh, you can see uh, OS media. This is uh, one which is created by Word automatically. This is the pool automatically created because it got okay we got our iso images here so i'm selecting windows 7 iso here clicking choose volume so this is our iso image clicking forward now how much memory you want to allocate how many cpus i'm leaving it to default clicking forward what is the disk size you're looking for this is windows so i'm going with uh, let's say 15 gb or let's go with 20 which was default or you can choose any custom size i'm not going to install windows completely this is only uh, something to show you how graphical installation work forward and ready to begin the installation name what you want to your vm name i'm saying this is my test windows 7 and uh, if you want to customize any configuration before install select this one i'm not selecting in network selection uh, it is going to create netted interface or you want to specify your own shared device. Here I'm selecting my shared device, which is going to be bridge. I'm saying it is going to be bridge zero. As I mentioned in networking session, if you got uh, different VLANs, you can create different bridge interface or bridge networks. You can select that appropriate uh, bridge network during uh, this uh, network selection phase. So here I'm sticking with the default one, which is VIRPR zero, clicking finish. You can see it domain created and uh, you can uh, see this is a console for test win 7 which is automatically launched. You can see guys uh, that domain is booting from ISO image or Windows 7 and uh, after that you can continue with the normal installation steps for Windows and your Windows will be installed. So this is our KVM guest with Windows 7. So this is the way guys uh, you can install windows. That's it in this session guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you.